Hello lovelies, this is the next video in our series of videos where we take you through the fundamental skills that you need in maths for A-level chemistry. So here we are looking at relative atomic mass. Now, this has a lot of algebra in it, so if you're not 100% sure, go look at the video previous to this where we take you through the, the GCSE algebra skills that you need to go through all of this. But it is really important that you get those skills, these skills sorted, so then later on in this playlist, we can go on to do some more complicated exam style questions. So now we're gonna have a look at these relative atomic mass questions. Now before we get started, let's have a little look at the equation that we're going to need to use. So here it is. So we need to know this equation that relative atomic mass is equal to sigma, which is the sum of the mass number times by percentage abundance. And then once we have those all times together and added together, we will divide it by 100. So it's important that we know that that little sigma sign there, which is a Greek letter, means the sum of, okay, which means we're gonna do mass times percentage and then add mass times percentage until we've done it for everything. So let us get started here. Let's have a look here at question one. So in question one, we're told that we have 51.5% of bromine 79 and 48.5% of bromine 81. So in this case, we will do 79 times 51.5 plus 81 times 48.5 and then we will divide that by 100. So what we've done there is mass times percentage plus mass times percentage. And that ends up giving us 79.97. And that there is the RAM. Okay, let's have a look now at question two. So here the same idea occurs. So here we've got 81.3% of chlorine 35, and 18.7% of chlorine 37, where in this case the 35 is the mass of that first isotope of chlorine and 37 is the mass of that second isotope. So let's give this calculation a go. So in this case, the relative atomic mass is going to be equal to 35 times by 81.3 plus 37 times by 18.7 and then we will divide that all by 100. So we tap that away into the calculator, and what I end up getting as our answer there is 35.374. And that there is the relative atomic mass of that sample of chlorine. So next up we've got question three, and this one here is looking at a sample that contains 98% of carbon 12 and 2% of carbon 14. So in this case, again, we're going to use the equation that we have here. We can see we've got two different masses of carbon, 12 and 14, and they're different relative abundances. So if we put that into our equation here, we find that our relative atomic mass is going to be equal to 12 times 98% plus 14 times two. And once we add those together, we will divide it by 100. And tapping that away into the calculator, I end up making that an answer of 12.04. And that there is going to be the relative atomic mass of this particular sample of carbon. So now let's have a look at question four. And this one is a little bit different, and this is a really good one for us to have a look at. Because we can see here, it becomes clear to us, that these questions aren't only going to be about two different species, okay? There could be more than two. In this case, question four, you can see there's three different isotopes of iron, but that alone doesn't stop it. There could be even more, but we're just going to repeat the process and it will end up giving us our answer. Okay, so here we can see we've got 6% of iron 54, 90% of iron 56, and 4% of iron 58. So let us put this now into our equation. We're going to use it in exactly the same way. We're going to do mass times percentage plus mass times percentage plus mass times percentage, and then divide it all by 100. So let's do it. Let us now substitute all these numbers into our calculation. 
So here we've got the relative atomic mass is going to be equal to 54 times 6 plus 56 times 90 plus 58 times by 4 and then once we add all of those together we will divide it by 100 and then if we put that into the calculator I end up making it an answer of 55.96 and that there is the relative atomic mass of this particular sample of iron. So now we have a very similar question but this time we're using different isotopes of magnesium. Here we can see we've got 78.8% of magnesium 24, 9.8% of magnesium 25 and 11.4% of magnesium 26. So to work out the relative atomic mass we want to just substitute that into the equation we have here which will end up being 24 times 78.8 etc. So let's do it, let's put these numbers into our formula. So when we substitute it, we end up finding that our relative atomic mass is going to be equal to 24 times 78.8 plus 25 times by 9.8 plus 26 times by 11.4. And all we need to do now is divide it by 100. So if we tap that into the calculator, I end up getting my answer for that to be 24.326. And that there is going to be the relative atomic mass of this particular sample of magnesium. Ouch! This is why in some videos I like explain scratches.